I want to welcome you to the AQHA Member Forum on Animal Welfare. Since AQHA was established in 1940, animal welfare has been a priority. I want to see a show of hands how many people have read their rule book from cover to cover. Stewards, come on, let's see. Throughout, uh, throughout this new format, animal welfare is reinforced in every section. In fact, the word welfare appears 22 times in the policy statement alone. I hear some stewards laughing, thinking, oh, did I get that question right? So if you're interested in being a steward, that's the first question on the AQHA stewards rule book test. That's right. So to echo the concern for animal welfare, I want to read a quote from Bill Brewer that appeared in a 1990 journal article. It says, my big concern, and I believe the largest single threat to our industry, has to do with animal welfare and humane issues. He said, I'm not just talking about abusing the horse, but also the way society looks at the horse. It's not something we need to be fearful of, but it's something that we need to be aware of. This awareness comes with responsibility to take action. To address this concern and take action, in 2012, the Executive Committee appointed a 12-member Animal Welfare Commission. And since its formation, much has been done proactively to safeguard horses. Today's environment is vastly different than it was in 1990. The standards for treatment of horses are much higher from the perspective of horse owners, the public, and even the government. While the welfare of horses has always been paramount to AQHA, the role of the association has had to evolve those expectations, those expectations to change. So to get us started this afternoon, we have a great group of speakers who have dedicated their lives to the horse and are committed to ensuring the wel their welfare. The way that we're going to conduct this afternoon's forum, and, and a forum means that everybody participates, is that we're going to invite all of our speakers up to present. And then once everybody's finished presenting, we're going to invite them back up here to the podium for questions from you guys. So to get us started, first I, is Dr. Jim Hurd. Dr. Hurd joined Texas A&M University in September 2009 as the executive professor and coordinator for the Equine Initiative. The Equine Initiative is a collaborative project between the Colleges of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences and Agriculture and Life Sciences to strengthen equine programs in both colleges. Dr. Hurd is the former chair of the Show and Professional Horsemen's Committee, AQHA's Judges Committee, and he is the current chair of the Animal Welfare Commission. Dr. Hurd is going to update you on the progress of AQHA and the topics that the Animal Welfare Commission will be addressing. Dr. Hurd. Thank you, Ward. I see we have a lot of Presbyterians in today because uh, the first three rows aren't full. But uh, <clears throat> it's a pleasure for me to visit with you today, not only about the Animal Welfare Commission, but also about why I and others believe that what the Commission is charged with accomplishing is so important to the future of our horses, to the American Quarter Horse Association, and to you, its members. I'm really glad that I get to speak first today because I know all these people that are on the program and I don't want to follow any of them. So you're in for, you're in for a really uh, interesting afternoon. I want to echo one of the things that Ward said. This is a members forum and even though there's some of us up front, we want to make sure that you get a chance to ask questions and that we have a chance to answer those. If we don't, get a, if you don't get a chance today and you see us during the convention, stop us and ask us uh, your question and we'll try to answer that. It's been an unbelievable experience for me to work with the people who make up the membership of the AQHA Animal Welfare Commission. They are an extremely talented and dedicated group who come to the Commission from a wide and diverse background. There are exhibitors, breeders, trainers, veterinarians, and educators on the Commission. Each of the members of this Commission 
or leaders within their own realm. What brings us together as a group, though, is a love for the American Quarter Horse, the American Quarter Horse Association, and a passion to make certain that our horses and our association is protected now and into the future. Let me also say that this commission is a tribute to our leadership. The executive committee, and especially Executive Vice President Don Treadway, has enthusiastically challenged us to make a difference. And they are, have courageously supported what we have recommended. They've taken bold and definitive positions on protecting our horse. I know that as members of AQHA, you are proud and excited about the stance that your association is taking on animal welfare. We're at the forefront of the equine industry with this stance, as Bill said, on the most important issue facing our industry. Other organizations are coming to AQHA to find out how they can develop a similar procedure and a similar committee to protect their horses and their association. If I were to describe my remarks today, I would utilize a quote from Immanuel Kant, a German philosopher born in 1724. Many consider him the father of modern philosophy. Sometime in the mid-1700s, he said, we can judge the heart of a man by his treatment of animals. I think the same can be said about the heart of an equine association. We can judge the heart of our association the American Quarter Horse Association by how we, its members, treat our horses. Like some of you, I have to ask myself how we've allowed ourselves to come to the point that our breed needs an Animal Welfare Commission to define humane policy. Simply put, I believe we arrived at where we are today one small step at a time. We ignored the trainer or exhibitor that we saw taking a too aggressive approach to training. We ignored the sometimes robotic way that our horses began to move and to be shown. Our competition is tough, and sometimes in order to compete, our training methods have become more and more extreme so that our horses have lost individuality and at times expression. Certainly I, as a longtime AQHA judge, have been as guilty as any other for asking for more and more perfection from our horses until robotically trained horses were the norm rather than the unusual. So why didn't we do anything about it if we didn't like it? We didn't do anything for a variety of reasons. Some of you certainly have questioned what we were doing, but when they asked why our horses move the way they do, or why someone was training in a particularly aggressive way, you were told it's okay. We need to do this in order to win. Sometimes well-known exhibitors who told us it was okay simply intimidated us. And finally, as a group of owners, breeders, and exhibitors, we just didn't pay attention to gradual changes that when accumulated over years are a huge divergence from where we started. Most of all though, like some of our modern human athletes who are so common in our headlines today, we did what we have done in order to win. We became accustomed to the look and the style and decided it was okay. As the term habituation is defined, we learned to ignore what at first sight we found to not only be unpleasant, but often undesirable. However, in our culture today, that's where the conflict begins. What we have learned to accept is not all right with a general public that has not been habituated to what we have seen. They don't like it, they don't want to be a part of it, and they want it stopped. To be honest, we have no idea how many people in the last 20 years have come to our show with a love of horses and left, never to return because they didn't like what they saw us doing to our horses. Worse, we have no idea how many parents brought their horse-crazy children to our shows and left saying they didn't want their children to be a part of what we were doing. Even worse than the above, we probably don't even know, we didn't even know they were there because they didn't talk to any of us. And if they did, we told them they would get used to it. It's all right, it's the way we train. Or the worst response of all for the American Quarter Horse, it's okay, this is the way we've bred them to move. I remember a quote from a commentator during one of the baseball strikes a few years ago. I think it's pertinent to where we are as an industry. 
especially an industry that is wondering where our youth have gone. This commentator said, our sport can survive economic cycles and other common problems that it will face. What it can't survive is becoming unfashionable to the general public. As an industry, we need to make certain that we don't become unfashionable because of what we do to our horses, how they look, and how we train them. In agriculture, and in particular the horse industry, it's common for us to dislike activists, especially those that don't like what we do. We call them crazy, eccentric, troublemakers, ignorant, and worse. But listened to early enough, activists can be helpful to an industry. Most activists join the animal welfare groups after they've been ignored by their own industry. If you think that there are not people in our industry who are concerned about what we're doing, I urge you to Google terms like equine welfare, inhumane treatment of horses, inhumane treatment of show horses, or any related topic. There you will find page after page of comments directed to what they're seeing when they go to our shows and to our events. To these people, we are already unfashionable. So why does AQHA have an Animal Welfare Commission? Simply put, we have one to protect our horse. By protecting our horses, we are allowing our association to be proactive addressing its problems rather than waiting until someone outside our industry tries to limit our ability to show and exhibit as they've done with the Tennessee Walking Horse and as they now are doing with spotted saddlebreds and racking horses. During my years at Colorado State University, I was able to work with a well-known animal welfare spokesperson, Dr. Bernie Rollin. Bernie loves ranchers, he loves horsemen, and those who make their living raising livestock humanely. He's often bridged the gap between producers and activist groups. My favorite quote of his pertains to how we keep the animal activists away from our industry. He says, it's simple. As an industry, you need to quit doing the 5% of your practices that activists spend 95% of their time criticizing you about. Stop doing the 5% that they spend 95% of their time criticizing you about. By the way, Bernie also believes that those of us that show and race horses are what he calls the low-hanging fruit of future activist activities if we don't change what we are doing. The Animal Welfare Commission is trying to identify and manage those practices that are inhumane to our horses and that we need to stop immediately. And at the same time, stop those things that we're doing that obviously bring criticism to our industry and threaten us with outside control. So what are the recommendations that have come out of the Animal Welfare Commission? Basically, our recommendations fall into three categories. One, legal or illegal equipment and training on the showgrounds. Two, strengthening our stewards program. And three, the development of recommendations for fines and penalties for those that choose to ignore our long established humane care rules. As with anything that is new and different, there's been lots of rumors and comments about what we've done and why. I was amazed to go back and read about the convention last year and all the things that the Animal Welfare Commission had recommended for the convention and we hadn't even made our comments public yet. This year is different. I appreciate I, that the fact that you as members are realizing that we're not out to get anyone, we're not crazy fanatics, and that in fact we're simply trying to put structure to what most of you think we should be doing as a breed and as an association. We're trying to stop those practices that we cannot defend, the ones that we need to absolutely stop doing in order to protect our horses and our industry. I'm going to talk in generalities about some of these, but all of the Commission's recommendations are in the AQHA handbook. First of all, the Commission defined abuse as it concerns our horses and our association by stating that abuse is any excessive or repetitive action that causes obvious distress or discomfort to a horse. Think about that for just a minute. Any excessive and or repetitive action that causes obvious distress or discomfort to a horse. This doesn't mean that you can't take a hold of the horse in the warm-up ring. It doesn't mean that you can't reinforce or correct. It means that you can't be excessive and repetitive until it becomes abusive. 
For example, let me ask you a question because you've all seen these things. How many times in the warm-up pen do we need to spin a horse before we go into a reining class? How many times do we need to run down the middle of the pen and fence a horse, getting it to stop better the day of the show? How many times do we need to lope over trail obstacles? How many times do we need to jump a fence? And how many times before a class in the warm-up pen do we need to ask for lateral and vertical flexion? The members of the commission are horsemen and women. They know that in order to get a high level of performance, we have to ask. But they also know that some of what we've been asking for in our practice pens is going too far. And that some of the equipment on our horses and practice pens is not only inhumane, it's unnecessary for good horsemen. And that some of the equipment that we're seeing is not conducive to increasing support from those who are evaluating us from outside our industry. Secondly, we established a working mission statement for the commission. That mission says the mission of the Animal Welfare Commission is to provide a framework for its members to one, identify issues negatively affecting the welfare of the American Quarter Horse, two, discuss those issues, and three, recommend actions to the executive committee that will help protect the American Quarter Horse from inhumane practices and the AQHA and its members from the negative impacts associated with those practices. The AQHA Animal Welfare Commission, in an effort to do right by the horse, will share discussion, action items, and recommendation with Alliance partners. This last part is important. The Commission's actions are not an effort to blame one group or another. Our Alliance partners are just that. They're our partners. We have tried to listen to their concerns, and they've certainly listened to how we as a Commission came to our recommendations. When I think about some of the discussions we've had with those Alliance partners and certainly the discussions that we've had within our own group, they follow the thinking of another great 18th century philosopher, William James. Regarding discussions and decision making, he said, in order to have a full discussion, we have to go beyond excuses, stereotypes, shallow thinking, rampant present mindedness, and self-indulgence. I can assure you that this group, this commission, has done all of this and at times more. I also at the, I want to tell you how much respect each of the members of that commission have for each other and from the industry or the part of our industry from which they come. There's tremendous respect in that commission. As far as new guidelines are concerned, we started with equipment. With some logical exceptions, we have asked that exhibitors that as exhibitors, we warm up and use on the showgrounds equipment that follows AQ equipment rules that is legal in the show pen. Exceptions were made with the understanding that there is a place for humane training or freshening of a horse at a show and realizing that any piece of equipment can be removed if it is being used inhumanely. In addition, we have asked our stewards to be more proactive in watching for those times when our exhibitors need to be softer and how and what they ask for in the warm-up pen, and to stop abuse when they see it. As far as stewards are concerned, this is the second of three main areas the Commission has addressed. We believe the stewards program is a key part of this entire effort. In fact, we believe that the stewards are essential to the change that we are trying to acquire. Let me be clear, we have great stewards and a good stewards program, but we need to remember it's an evolving system. In the past, our stewards have probably been more ambassadors than implementers of the association's guidelines. Today, we're asking them to be both. We want them to talk to the novice or the uninformed about our efforts, but we want them to identify abuse, stop it, and use the fines and penalty process that was developed by the commission to encourage compliance. The fines and penalty system is the working close of the recommendation from the Animal Welfare Commission. We strongly believe that in order to eliminate inhumane practices, we need a system that penalizes repeat offenders. With the fines and penalties that have been approved by the Executive Committee, we have that resource. As I said, we understand that some people may just not know they're using a piece of equipment that is not legal or that they're pushing too hard in the warm-up ring. As you can see on the chart on the screen, there is a category for that. 
An important part of the fines and penalty process is also the immediate filing of any warnings or card issuance. In the past, it was easy for an exhibitor to get a warning today and next week at another show with a different steward to get another one. We had no way to record or check on previous warnings. Now we do. Our hope is that certainly very soon in the future that our stewards will even be able to download onto their iPhones or other handheld devices any outstanding offenses that someone may have that they're talking to. The AQHA Animal Welfare Commission also recommended and the Executive Committee approved the formation of an AQHA Grievance Committee that will consider the level of fines and or penalties to be administered. At present, the penalties for violations range from a simple warning for a mild offense to a large monetary fines and suspension from AQHA competition for repeat offenders. And of course, any recommendations from the Grievance Committee will be reviewed by the Executive Committee. As I close, let me leave you with a few conclusive thoughts. First, the Commission realizes that some of our decisions and recommendations are debatable. Some of you say that we've gone too far, and some of you say that we haven't gone far enough. Some of you have said that we should have been even stricter about equipment that we have allowed, and others that we were too extreme. We will continue to always look at these guidelines at each of our meetings. Secondly, we hope as an industry we remember that the future of our industry depends on the new people we can bring into it, especially young people into our youth program. We cannot risk the ultimate challenge to our association and our industry that we have become unfashionable. We must make certain that we present a product and an opportunity in which people want to participate and want their children to participate. Thirdly, we must recognize that at present we are open to public criticism because of some of our practices. Some of this criticism is coming from organized humane groups. We need to realize that these people are not going to go away. We need to address our problems ourselves as horsemen and horsewomen. We know what is humane and what isn't. We need to fix what we all know is unacceptable, not defend it or ignore it. In closing, as members of the Commission, we appreciate the support we have received from you, our members. We want to protect our horse, and in so doing, protect our industry into the future. And to paraphrase Kant, who I quoted in the beginning, when people look into the heart of the American Quarter Horse Association, we want them to judge us positively because we are treating our horses with the care and respect that they deserve. I hope that you enjoy the rest of the forum. Please take time to ask questions as we come toward the end of, of all of our speakers. I hope you enjoy the convention. As a, as a, a, a born-again Texan, uh, I welcome you to Texas, and it's good to have all of you here. Thank you, and I look forward to talking to you during the convention.